On the 35th of February, eight pupils from Buxton School were invited to attend the Warrington Peace Centre to interview people who were involved in the conflict in Northern Ireland. Why did you join? I just kind of thought, well, um, it could be a bit, it could work out as a career. I didn't have much in the way of qualifications um, and I thought it might be exciting. I would travel um, and I also thought that, you know, it'd be good fun to have a go at shooting a rifle and just kind of boyish kind of reasons, really. In 1968, I served for a short time in Northern Ireland. It was only it was about six weeks or something like that. And that was before there was any aggravation there. There was civil rights stuff going on. But I bought myself out then. So when Northern Ireland started up and, and soldiers were sent out the streets in 1969, my sort of view was, well, from what I know of the army and the previous campaigns that the British Army had done, I, I don't really believe the army is going to be part of, of, of a solution. I, I think they're going to be part of the problem. So, so I was one of the people who started the Troops Out movement. The thing that made me want to be active on to get Britain out of Ireland was Bloody Sunday. I was at home in my mother's and we were watching television and the news flashes were coming through that uh, the soldiers had shot people in Derry and it was horrific. And I also felt very personally about it because I felt I am paying the wages of those people, the soldiers, who did that in my name. I took it very personally and that was when I decided to become active to campaign for British withdrawal from Ireland. What did you know about Northern Ireland? I knew a lot about Northern Ireland because we went every year, so I, I have... 35 first cousins, I have 14 uncles and aunts, I have from scattered across Ireland, so I knew both North and South Ireland fairly well as a child, though we hadn't gone in the 60s because we were living abroad. Um, and I must say, when I went back there in the 70s, it was completely different. Um, the, the presence of soldiers made a huge difference to the community. I joined the army in 1971, when things started to really move in, in Northern Ireland, and at that point, when I joined, I really didn't join thinking I was going to go and, and, and fight anywhere. The way we were, it was presented to us as soldiers was that we were going there as peacekeepers to stop the two communities from fighting each other. How did you feel about the conflict? We were put in very specifically to absolutely control those areas, totally control them and ensure that none of the population moved unless we knew about it. And um, the first, I wrote a book about it, but the first part starts off with a house search in, uh, in Belfast. And it essentially means kicking the door in and going in and searching through every single part of that person's house and doing whole streets at a time. I mean, this, this is what Belfast was like in the early 19, in 1973. I mean, it was a horrendous place very violent and, uh, and the population, the normal people who went to work every day, sent their children to, work every, uh, to school every day, had to suffer through all this when these two sides or three sides were all fighting each other. And they were being killed, they were being tortured, there was all sorts of things going on. Because the minority, majority of the population just wanted a normal life. Um. Just to pick up on what some of the other people have said, from my experience of being in Ireland in the 50s and early 60s, what is often overlooked is that at that time the Protestant community um, not only controlled all the jobs, you couldn't get a job in Holland or Wolf if you were Catholic, you couldn't work in Hellstaff if you were Catholic, you couldn't work in lots of schools if you were Catholic. It was a very extreme discrimination against people, reason of religion. I don't think the conflict is about religion, but I think people in power use religion to control jobs and the economy for their own people. What is the worst thing you experienced? The 
the soldiers have talked about what it's like on the street, but actually there are other things which are quite provocative. The, the use of plastic bullets, which Mary... Mm -hmm. Now, plastic bullets are actually about this long, and they're extremely hard, and they're used for crowd control. And a number of children and elderly people were killed, or got horrific injuries, like, you know, half the face be caved in. And that was provocative. It was trying to stop people coming in the streets, but it caused a huge amount of community anger. And also strip searching women. Now there's been some talk about like women who wear veils being asked to remove veils, but actually what happened to women prisoners, Republican prisoners, is they were constantly strip searched. Every time they went to a family visit, every time they went to a remand hearing, they were extremely nastily strip searched. And it was all to try and break down. So if anybody went to visit them, they were strip searched. If people went into, say, a, a Tom delegation and got pulled in, they were strip searched. And because it was a, a very Catholic country, very much like the Muslim community, it actually had a very bad impact on the community. So there were things like that which weren't just soldiers on the beat, there was also other things which the government as a policy was doing, which was just provoking people. And at one time, 55,000 Irish people were being stopped at ports of entry every year and being held for up to 12 hours and interrogated just because they'd been to Ireland. How do you feel about it all now? Part of the problem is that you've got a situation in Northern Ireland where the British government will not admit that it made a mistake or it's wrong or its policies are wrong, ever. And even though the, the proof is right there, when I wrote my book, um, I'd come out and I was like, oh yeah, you, you know, parachute regiment, blah, blah, blah. I wrote my book and suddenly the entire establishment wants to pull me down. I, had, I was followed in my car, um, I had my phone tapped, um, all sorts of things that, that just continued for a year. They refused to allow my book to be published for six months while they did a full investigation of me to see whether or not they could lock me up for infringement of the Official Secrets Act which meant that they could have thrown me in jail and locked me up, thrown away the key. So, you know, when you question what governments do, you really step into a minefield. And it's usually not the people that, um, that you would think would be after you, like the IRA or, or the you know, Protestant militants. It's your own government. It's like Afghanistan. You can stay there indefinitely if you want to just to prove a point that you're not going to quit or give up. But at some point you have to concede it's a stalemate and try to gracefully and tactfully withdraw. Could we not have done it earlier? In Northern Ireland, I really think there's a lot of missed opportunities. A lot of missed opportunities. Where were the great statesmen, the great leaders from all sides 25, 30 years ago? Violence breeds violence. So whoever starts it, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. But what it just is a circle that keeps on going. You hit me, I'll hit you harder. You hit me harder, I'll hit you even harder. And it just escalates and it keeps on going up. A lot of blood was spilt uh, for nothing, I really do. understood a bit more about conflict and how conflict how conflict start and how it can be resolved and when I think about it I think I could help as well instead of letting things happen and letting it go like if there's a fight or problems in my community I could help as well instead of leaving it for other people to help and expecting them to help I could join in and try and make it work. Um, in school, we do learn, it's just we don't really learn from different people accounts, so we've just got one thing stuck in our head. If we hear what other people, other people's opinions, it gives us more of an image in our head of what's happened and um, stuff like that, basically. Can you, can you develop a bit more what you're telling us about um, the gangs and the postcode eyes? You said that you were being stopped. Um, okay. Was that by yeah. just other boys? Um, basically, I live in Leytonstone, that's E11. <clears throat> and le one day I was, well, there was two, I've been stopped twice. Once I was walking up the road with my brother, and then there was this boy, he was riding a bike, and 
as he was riding, he was putting up his hand like this, which is L for Leighton. And then he rode, he went behind me, and then he stopped me. He went, Oi, where are you from? Only I live in Leightonstone, so I was okay that time. But let's say it was in Stratford. I wouldn't say I'm from Leightonstone because I'll probably get beaten up or worse, stabbed. So basically, my, me and my friends, we joke about this. We say, you know, wherever, where, wherever you're... Wherever you are, you say you're from there, like you live just down the road. You never say that <laughs> you're from a different place. <laughs> so wherever you are, even if it's your first time going there, oh yeah, I live just, just down there, my house is just around there. So, you know, and it doesn't cause any problems if you say that. Um, school is probably one of the safest places that you can be. Because uh, the place that when I got stopped was actually a few, only a few, well, less than 30 seconds away from my school. But it was like it was only around six o'clock, and you know in the winter it gets dark quickly. Mm. So, but I, you know, I think once you do step into the school gates, you do feel relaxed, and you just do have that sense of safety that your teachers are gonna protect you and will provide safety for you if anything was to happen. Like, and even like little ways like crossing the road, your teachers will stand in front of the car. Um, <laughs> even even little things like that. So, like, you know, put, allows you to put your trust in them. Thanks for watching the film. We hope you have enjoyed it and learned. We had an excellent experience. <laughs>